So, you've clicked on a video with a title you probably don't understand. I get it. Widgets is just the term that I use for these things. It is entirely possible that the community has named these things something else and I am blissfully ignorant. It is what it is. A widget, for me, is a collection of elements, be that splitters or conveyors or underground belts, etc., that have been arranged to perform a very specific purpose. Generally speaking, these widgets are required in a factory to ensure that the correct flows are maintained on a conveyor belt or collection of conveyor belts, but as with all these things, the moment you start defining something, then something else either wants to squeeze itself in or squeeze itself out of that definition. And so the various things I'm going to cover in this video are really just a collection of useful things. Widgets or no, I use all of these things in every factory I build, mostly. Some of these are more tenuous than others. And just so we all know where we stand, I won't be covering belt balances in this video for one very simple reason. I don't use them. The first widget I'm going to cover is the mixing widget. Now, this is technically the third video where I've covered this thing. And although I don't like repeating myself, it is my favorite. Uh, you know, and also the idea of making this video without including it is genuinely daft. So. Here we go, version number three. If we need to mix two ingredients on a single belt and we choose to do so by butting the belts up against each other, then the only configuration which works out perfectly, mathematically speaking, is two yellow belt inputs and a single red belt output. Any other configuration with any other speed of belt and there is a loss of efficiency somewhere. It won't be perfect. And we solve this problem with the mixing widget. If we place two splitters so they are facing each other, then we can mix the ingredients whilst maintaining the same number of output belts as input belts. We don't have two input belts being squeezed onto a single belt anymore. We have two belts entering the widget and two belts exiting the widget. This allows us to maintain the same flow rate before and after the mixing of the ingredients. This widget is invaluable. I use this everywhere. I generally arrange it like so. One, because it is a tight, neat little package, i.e. my classic definition of a widget, but also two, because it allows me to squeeze it into the middle of a bunch of furnaces and immediately split it off to feed those furnaces. This is what I would call the standard mixing widget, but there are a couple of variations that are useful. If we have a bank of assembly machines left and right, and we want to feed them with a single mix belt of ingredients, we will probably gravitate towards something like this, where we butt the conveyors against each other, put that into a splitter, and then that mix belt will feed the assembly machines. But what if we use this same front-to-front -front splitter idea? Would this not be a more elegant way of arranging things? Let's take this one step further. What if we don't want to mix the ingredients? If we were trying to bring in two conveyors of ingredients and then split them off to go left and right, then there would need to be a tile gap between those conveyors so that one of them could run underneath the other one. This isn't a problem. For me, when I'm presented with this type of scenario, I see that tile gap as the perfect place to bring the output through. But that might not necessarily always be the case. This front-to-front -front splitter widget thing will allow those same inputs to be brought through side by side. And just to take this one other step further, there are situations that I find myself in where I can't put down a splitter exactly where I want it in a main bus. There are just occasions where a nexus of pipes or conveyors is right in the way and I can't put that splitter down exactly where I want it to go. However, by switching the splitter around and running the conveyor underneath it, sometimes this clash can be avoided. The next widget I want to cover is the centerline widget. And this is also something I've covered in another video. Yeah, sue me. When we design a block of factory units, there are two distinct approaches we can use. We can use an edge geometry, where we route all the ingredients around the edges of the block and then split those off as and when we need them. And we can also use a centerline geometry, where we route the ingredients through the middle. And it is important to note that there is no factory performance to be gained here. The only reason to use one approach over the other is aesthetics, you know, which one appeals to you more. But in order to get the centerline geometry to work, we need a new widget. When we have a large bank of factory processes stacked up in a single block with a centerline geometry, we will need the input belts to split left and right 
but also to continue on their original path to feed subsequent rows of other assembly machines or chemical plants or whatever. We essentially need a splitter with three outputs which we don't have or we need this centerline widget. The centerline widget is two splitters working in collaboration. One to deal with the splitting left and right operation and the other to split between this and the rest of the centerline. There are two basic configurations that are available. Which one you choose to use is really up to you. They both do the same job. For me, I generally use the one on the left because it is narrower and this is often more important to me than the compactness the one on the right offers. But there are situations where the one on the right comes into play. And they can also be used to join belts together as well as split them off. The next kind of widget I'm going to cover is what I would call the scrambler. There are some situations where we have a belt of materials and either they are being loaded onto that belt unevenly or they are being used from that belt unevenly and the end result is a conveyor belt with one side completely full and one side completely empty. This is not what we want. If only half the conveyor belt is being used then we are only extracting half of the conveyor belt's capacity. This is potentially a 50% drop in efficiency. A 50% drop in how much material that conveyor belt will deliver. We solve this with a scrambler and there are a number of different configurations. The first, the one I generally use, is what has been called the J scrambler. Someone suggested this in the comments of one of my videos and it makes so much sense that I'm just going to steal it. I like this configuration because it is simple and elegant. If we put it on a corner, i.e. where a conveyor belt changes direction, then it almost looks like it was designed to be there. It, it just works so perfectly. The second configuration, which I'm going to dub the T scrambler, you know, if we're going with a single letter naming convention for these things, then this definitely looks like a T, the same way the other one looks like a J. Anyway, this configuration is a little bit janky. It doesn't sit on a conveyor belt as elegantly as the J does, in my opinion. However, if I have two belts side by side that both need scrambling, then it actually doesn't seem so bad. Uh, a bit of symmetry and suddenly it looks elegant again. Now, these are the scramblers that I've actually used in a factory. What I'm about to present you with is a scrambler that popped into my head while I was playing this video, which I haven't actually found a use case for, or even a name to be honest. This scrambler not only scrambles the inputs, but it also splits those inputs left and right at the same time. Is this useful? I honestly don't know. Is it cool? Possibly. Is it a widget? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, next. A splitter. What I'm about to say is potentially obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway. We have a conveyor belt and we want to split it off to go left. We place a splitter like so, but we can also place the splitter on the other side of the belt and run the conveyor under itself. And this has interesting implications. For a start, this configuration is only two tiles wide whereas the default splitter location requires three tiles in width to occupy. Also, if this belt is running tight to something that can't be moved, like a wall or a railway or something, then this orientation actually allows that belt to be split off at all. With the standard orientation, it would not be possible to split this belt left. Taking it a step further, if we have two belts side by side and we want to split them both off to go left, then this can be achieved with a couple of splitters, one with the standard orientation and the other with the splitter on the other side of the belt like I've just explained. If I'm being honest, the only reason I consider this to be a widget at all is because this configuration of things is incredibly useful for barreling loops because for anywhere that needs a barrel needs two conveyor belts, one to deliver the full barrels and one to return the empties. And this widget, I'm going to put it in inverted commas, gets used all the time in those barrel loops. Very useful but also potentially obvious. Moving on. The standard approach in Factorio is more equals better, right? The factory must grow. We deliver the maximum ingredients we can to a process and it will take care of itself. But there are situations where this isn't necessarily the case. Going back to the barreling loops, at the start of my barreling experience, I had a problem delivering empty barrels into the assembly machines to be filled again because the way I'd originally built the block effectively gave priority to the first assembly machine in the line. I wasn't loading all assembly machines with the same amount of barrels each and so I wasn't able to extract full efficiency from those assembly machines. 
I needed a configuration of conveyor belts that loaded a series of steel chests with the exact same number of barrels over time regardless of where the assembly machine sat in the line. This is the layout of conveyor belts I built to do the job. The power of this configuration, if this isn't looking all that special to you, is that it is infinitely scalable. We can make this array as big as we want and it will still deliver the same amount of materials to each destination. Well, as long as the number of destinations we are trying to deliver to is a factor of two to the power n, i.e. two, four, eight, 16, 32, etc. A splitter has two outputs, so this system is fundamentally limited to halves and quarters and eighths, but it is still useful. I also use this kind of distribution widget in my Coverex processing because we have the same basic issue. I need to store U235 somewhere so I can count it, but if it all gets stored in a single box, then it is difficult to unload quickly enough to process through Coverex. We need that U235 to be evenly loaded amongst a number of chests, as long as that number is 2 to the power n, with this delivery system, and then when the Coverex needs to get going, all of the chests can feed that process at once, and not just the ones that happen to have been prioritized by whatever system of belts I've laid down. So this is all of them, or at least the ones that I'm aware of. You know, this is the suite of tools that I have in my toolbox to solve flow rate problems that occur in bases that I build. Just a really useful collection of widgets.